Welcome to the American Mind, and thank you, Diana Schaub, uh, for joining us today. Uh, Diana is the co-editor of a new book uh, called What So Proudly We Hail, The American Soul in Story, Speech, and Song. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, about a claim made in the introduction to the book, that America is a, a unique country uh, because uh, unlike, although we sing in one of the song lyrics that are, in, in, uh, that are included in this book, we sing that uh, this is the land where our fathers died, we don't call America a fatherland, or for that matter, a motherland. Uh, we don't speak of Vaterland, as the Germans might. Uh, what does that tell us about America? How, why is American national identity different? Yeah, I think because of the unique nature of our founding. Uh, it is a more idea-based founding, so it really traces back to the Declaration of Independence and a claim about certain self-evident truths. Uh, and so it, uh, it, it, it makes uh, the nature of an American's attachment to his country a little bit different. Uh, and I think it means that that attachment has to be more thoughtful or more thought has to go into mm -hmm. uh, how one becomes an American. And is that, is that a good thing? Uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> it means a lot to me uh, <laughs> as, an, as an American. Why? Uh, well, I guess just because it doesn't depend on the accident of one's birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is an accident that you and I are both born right. born here, but... And formally, uh, that's all it takes. E oh. Right. Uh, but, you know, we also know that many people in other parts of the world are, in a way, Americans before they make their way here and, and become naturalized yes. as Americans. Yes. So there are certain American ideas that are universal but are uniquely, mm -hmm. you know, instantiated in, in this country for the first time. Does that mean that um, you know anyone anywhere can be an American if you just plop them over here or, or does it take take more than just being a human being? Yeah I, I think it does and our history and coming to understand that history is important so there will be other things that will be layered on top of that ideational component. Uh, and in fact, I think that was the idea behind the anthology, uh, that it, it's not enough just to understand the ideas, that you really need to address the heart in some way. Uh, Booker T. Washington, very famously, when he talks about education, he says that education is an education of the head, the hand, and the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you were to think about American education today, you know, we're very aware of this decline in uh, civic knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, people are trying to remedy that in various ways. I mean, I do that myself in my teaching, by teaching about the founding. Sure. Uh, but I, I think by itself that's probably insufficient. Uh, you know, you can learn about the idea of the separation of powers, but it's not going to make you a better citizen if you don't really care, mm -hmm. <laughs> love America right, enough right. to care about the status of that separation of power today, whether it's, you know, still in place or not. So your example of that would be service learning or sort of uh, compassionate, uh, charitable activities right. in the community. But does that include work? Uh, no, and that might be <clears throat> one thing that's lacking. I mean, when Booker T. Washington talks about the education of the hand, yeah. what he means is that the students at Tuskegee actually built the buildings yes. at, at they Tuskegee. Had to, yeah, they they to, worked as janitors in their They learned uh, to work with their, their hands, as, as we used to say. Yeah. True, true manual labor. Yeah. 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 I, and I do think that is something that's missing from our, our education today. But if, if I can just say what we're trying to provide yeah. then is this missing element, and I think the central element of the heart. Uh, and we came to the, uh, the conclusion that American literature is really a wonderful resource so this, for this, tapping into that. Uh, this anthology includes uh, a lot of short stories, uh, a fair number of classic American speeches, political speeches, um, right. and then some songs, some patriotic yeah. songs in which maybe for the first time people can actually see the whole song, all the lyrics, not just the ones you may see, you know, the first <laughs> right. verse, which is often the only one sung. Now, why those things? Why anthologize those things in an effort to, to improve American patriotism or civic consciousness? I, I think all of those are types of works that appeal to the moral imagination and mm. they appeal to the sentiments. 
uh, we don't want to just leave it at that, and so we give the songs, but then we, in each case, have a sort of section where we try to raise some questions about that. We want to deepen our reflection on these things, mm -hmm. so that the work is, is not simply uh, an exercise in cheerleading. You know, everything will be fixed if we just go back and start singing these songs again. <laughs> uh, we we, yes, we well, really music might improve. Um, now, yeah. um, there in this uh, in this book, which is a wonderful collection, I hadn't really looked at it until I uh, knew I was going to be speaking to you, <laughs> but I was I was very uh, delighted by it. Um, there's a fair number of contributions by Black Americans um, over the course of American mm -hmm. history, from Frederick Douglass. Uh, to Booker T. Washington and, uh, and, and more recently. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, about the reasons for mm -hmm. selection. I mean, do you think that, that um, in anthologizing them you are uh, reaching for a perspective that white Americans don't have? Or what is, what is the special contribution, if there is a special mm -hmm. contribution, that black Americans make to this question of American patriotism, whether intellectual or emotional? Yeah, if I think about how I myself became more interested in American political thought, uh, interested enough to, to really start studying and mm -hmm. writing about it, uh, it was through acquaintance with the life story of Frederick Douglass. Is that right? So, yeah, uh -huh. so this is just in a way, you know, personal to oh, me. Uh, the heroism of his struggle made me interested in the tragedy and triumph of of the the black mm. struggle in America. Uh, that in turn, I think, lead me, led me to become interested in well, how did the founders mm -hmm. handle this mm -hmm. issue of slavery? Uh, can we think well of the founders or not? Uh, and that really culminated in my interest in the statesmanship of Lincoln. So uh, Frederick Douglass once said. Uh, that the destiny of the nation has the Negro as its pivot. Hmm. Uh, what and does that I, mean? I, I think that's a, that's a true statement. In, in other words, the, the experience of blacks in America and whether blacks would be fully incorporated into the American polity or not uh, is really the severest test hmm. of our commitment to the principles of the Declaration. And is, is that because they, they were slaves or is it because they're black? Uh, both. In uh -huh. other words, there's first the problem of slavery and the fact that a nation founded upon the equality of all men had the institution of slavery uh, at its founding, uh, and then also the peculiar difficulties caused by the fact that that slavery was race-based mm -hmm. chattel slavery. Uh, and so even after the 13th Amendment and the disappearance of slavery, you have this legacy of, of racism and, and race, and that you know, takes another, another hundred years. So, uh, and, and I think, you know, we would say it's, it's not a struggle that's completely over yet. So we're, we're still trying to figure out what it means to live up to our principles. So, uh, so that means that we have a lot of pieces by African Americans in this anthology. There are pieces by, uh, by Douglas, by Booker T. Washington, mm -hmm. by W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, by uh, Malcolm X. Oh, actually, that's not right. No, that's no, he's right. He's missing. We should talk about why he's missing. <laughs> why is he missing? <laughs> uh, well, maybe because he uh, he uh, refused, in a way, to be an American. To, to acknowledge his Americanness. Yeah. And uh, and that's a, a a problem we yeah. should uh, pursue. Yeah. Uh, but you know, to 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 go back to those who more fully belonged or who were trying to figure out uh, a way to fully belong. Right. Uh, I, you asked about whether this was sort of providing something that white Americans are not aware of. Uh, I don't think that our intention was really the sort of multicultural in intention. Uh, these are stories and speeches mm -hmm. that emerge out of the black experience, but they really speak to these larger American themes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, for one, would be willing to do away with Black History Month entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it leads to a kind of distortion in our understanding. So I think it would be better to really mainstream yes. these writings. And I, I think that the anthology really tries to take this more richer or more fully integrative uh, approach. 